all righty, so everyone and their nan will be making a best of 2022 list, as will I, but I will start with the underappreciated gems, the best films from 2022 that you probably haven't seen. And starting with number 10, which is Kimmy. Veteran director Steven Soderbergh's straight-to-streaming Kimmy flew under the radar, but those who have seen it have nothing but praise. Zoe Kravitz is in the lead as an agoraphobic online technician during the peak of the pandemic who witnesses a murder via her laptop in a modern spin on Rear Window. Narratively, it is nothing compared to the Hitchcock masterpiece, but the thrills it supplies with such a small budget are brilliant, exceeding that of most big blockbusters seen in recent years. Its minimalistic set piece is a huge draw card, at least for the first half of the movie. The second part removes this quality, claustrophobic experience, but even with this flaw, it still holds up on its own as a really engrossing, action-packed thriller, a Soderbergh hit despite its covert status. At number 9, we have Deadstream. It's been many years since a found footage horror film has been somewhat original, but Deadstream, well it's a pre darn fun take on the tired trope. It takes place on a Twitch-like live stream, and to all you old people who don't know what Twitch is, I am not going to explain it because you're just going to forget anyway. It follows a divisive streamer, one who has recently caught a severe case of cancellitis, and his way to get back in the good books, spend a night in a haunted house, because why not? If Kimmy was minimalistic, Deadstream doesn't exist. It only features a few shitty cameras, it has one set location, the effects are all practical, and there are two named characters. It is so much fun, although maybe a little bit reliant on one's knowledge of the media format. There are plenty of cheeky little jabs thrown in through stream lingo, and some subtle nods to streamers in similar predicaments. The cancellation, I mean, not the brutal haunting, I don't think that's happened. At number 8, we have 4th of July. Now this one may be a little controversial, for one, it's from the mind of Louis C.K., a guy most people really cannot stand, but it's also underperformed critically to say the least as well. I'm gonna bite the bullet and say I liked it though. This is a really decent Woody Allen-esque family comedy, as in it's about family. Don't watch this with your kids, please. It shows a dysfunctional family through the lens of a wantaway, a man who is too good to meet with his relatives once a year. His words, not mine. It focuses on the worst of family gatherings, the bickering, the racist remarks from elders, the uncomfortable moments and nails it. Everything feels so genuine, as if this, like Deadstream, was a found footage film. Joe List is terrific in the lead role, even if his character is a bit confused, but he isn't the draw card. He is the foundation of a really solid comedy, one that barely cracked $300,000 at the box office. And coming in at number 7 is Funny Pages. It wouldn't be a list like this without some love for A24, so let's show it some. Funny Pages is from the mind of young indie director Owen Klein, who, fun fact, is actually the son of Kevin Klein, not to be confused with Calvin Klein who is an underwear. Funny Pages is a little pocket rocket clocking in at under 90 minutes long but still throwing heavy themes at us through its young, unlikable protagonist trying to find his place in the shit stick that is the world. This is A24 level uncomfortable. It features one of the most awkward Christmas dinners ever just in time for the holiday to come around. It is filled with a budget of about $3 maybe but still made a splash when it premiered at Cannes thanks to its edgy script and devoted performances from a relatively unknown cast. Funny Pages Pages is a movie most people won't ever see, but if you do, bring a blanket to hide under for those extra cringy scenes. At number 6 is Confess Fletch. It's a shame this comedic whodunit released in the same year as the lifeless See How They Run, because its place in the genre is 1000 times more warranted. John Hamm takes a step back into his clown shoes, playing the energetic Fletch, who must clear his name of a murder he was framed for. It is a continuation of the Fletch series made famous by comedy legend Chevy Chase, but honestly, Hamm improves the character, giving a tremendous sense of charm to go along with his childlike curiosity. It has some of the funnest dialogue of the year, dialogue which never has you lolling as the kids say, or or do they? I don't, I don't know anymore, I can't keep up. But what it lacks for in genuine cackles, it makes up for with unamountable chuckles. Confess Fletch is a really clever whodunit, one that sacrifices its shock factor, but does so in a really satisfying manner, an underrated comedy mystery. Cracking in at number 5 is You Won't Be Alone. We are going foreign here to Macedonia for a fantasy period piece, which now that I'm saying out loud kind of makes it sound like Cinderella, which it is not. You Won't Be Alone is the thought-provoking drama about a witch becoming familiar with herself and her surroundings 
surroundings through the bodies of other people. This chick takes over her victims and lives life through their eyes, literally, in a fascinating journey of self-discovery through the horror genre. It is weirdly enough a coming-of-age movie. It's really one of the ballsiest things I've seen to have this story, which could easily become indulgent or try too much or just become unrelatable, but you won't be alone through its sensitive script and balance between brutal body horror and human condition exploring themes nails it. It's got some of the most underrated performances of the entire year, both on screen and behind the camera, with props to director Goran Stalewski, who actually made his feature film debut with this gem at Sundance. And at number four, we have Graham Moore's The Outfit. This was one I actually saw way back in, in February. Starring the always incredible Mark Rylance, it is a minimalistic stage play of a film set in one room, starring just a handful of characters, but a whole lot of mafia-inspired mystery. It is a real head-scratcher of a film. It is tense. It is mysterious. It is tense. It is tense. Did I say it's tense? I call it a stage play film not because it is based on one, because I don't even think it is. It's because of how it is laid out. Long-winded, dialogue-heavy scenes. Action without in-your-face fights. It's subdued. It's like a fart in front of a girl you like. It builds and builds until it can't build anymore and releases pure chaos. Mark Rylance is unbelievable. This guy carries the film on his shoulders. He is brilliant. He harbors so much of the film's suspense within his own character arc, and the twists and turns are only possible due to his performance. It is silly to say a film is made by an actor, but this is a showcase of one of the most underrated members of Hollywood, a truly fantastic role for a fantastic performer. And the bronze medal goes to Marcel the Shell with shoes on. If you know me, you know how disappointed I've been with the animated genre this year because, well, it's been shithouse. But Marcel the Shell with shoes on from A24 may be one of the most heartfelt and touching productions to come out of the genre in the last few years. It's full of terrific, adorable voice acting, it's full of shells, and full of heart. This is one of the most poignant productions of the year. It is genuinely lovely from start to finish. You will have a grin on your face throughout. Well, that's all flowing tears. It's also really unique. Filmed as a documentary about a cute little shell, it's really raw despite being so obviously scripted. It feels so real despite being, you know, about talking shells. It is hard not to fall in love with this humble tale of family and purpose. It's a genuine must-watch film that is, unless you hate all things, adorable. And the runner-up is another A24 gem, After Sun. You have probably heard this thing. Charlotte Wells, Paul Mascal, they have done the rounds. It is one of the most beloved films of the year by those who have seen it. The issue is, it hasn't been seen by many, failing to make two million at the box office. If Marcel the Shell with Shoes on was unique, this is undescribable. It is fascinating. Its screenplay is beyond bold. It's so tame with its subject matter, but hits harder than anything you will see. It is a family drama about memories and expectations. It explores a father-daughter relationship that on paper is so meaningless, but on screen is as meaningful and as heartbreaking as anything. It's really special that a film so ambiguous, so up in the air in so many places, has won over just about everyone who has seen it. This is the type of story that should lose viewers. It is slow, drawn out, it leaves questions unanswered, but man is it compelling and real to life. Charlotte Wells is set to be a staple of the industry. She has nailed her feature debut, and Paul Mescal deserves just as much praise. A truly magnificent, vulnerable performance, but it isn't the top of this list. Because at number one, we have The Quiet Girl. I've spoken about this film on the channel before. It's an Irish drama about a young girl who goes to live away with distant relatives for the summer, away from her dysfunctional parents. It's an absolutely beautiful coming-of-age story. It is simple with its purpose, but intricate with its delivery. Its narrow aspect ratio draws you in, making you feel a part of the story. It's like a warm hug. I've never seen a simple family theme demonstrated so well by its cinematography. The performances, although delicate, are influential, with young Catherine Clinch the highlight. She was fantastic, not just for her age, but she's ultra talented, and hopefully we see more of her. This is one of the most emotional films I've seen in a long time. I was bawling my eyes out by the end of it, and on the verge of tears about 60 other times before the conclusion even came. The simplest of moments are so damn loud, from a man placing a biscuit on a table to a simple run down the driveway. It is so pronounced. Every single scene, every single moment has so much weight, and it's through its direction and cinematography that this is possible. The Quiet Girl is one of my favourite movies of the year, and of course, in my opinion, the best movie you probably haven't seen yet. So that is that. Those are the 10 best films that have flown under the radar. Let me know if I missed one down below. Like, subscribe, and go watch these movies.